Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials All Info No Fluff. Today's episode is all about locking stuff. Because sometimes your mix is so dank, you gotta put that shit on lock. Or maybe you just have butter fingers and you don't want to be accidentally moving stuff around. So let's talk about locking things. Now, most of those that I've used in the past have kind of like one locking function. Lock a track and that'll lock everything and you won't be able to touch it. With Reaper, it's a little bit more complicated than that. You can lock items and tracks separately. And then there are project locking settings. So first things first, locking tracks. Tracks. If I right click on any track, I can go down here to lock track controls. And when I hit it, you will see that it will be slightly discolored. And now I won't be able to touch any of its parameters. I won't be able to open its plugin window or bypass it. I won't be able to do anything to its routing. However you have them set, that'll be how they will remain until you unlock it. Another great thing about this is that, for example, this track that I locked is muted. And now let's say I want to unmute all my other tracks. If you hold command and click on any mute button, you will unmute all. But because this track is locked, locked, it won't receive that command. You can also lock your track heights. It's especially useful for sense. If I'm using sense, I never need to see these any bigger than they are. I don't really even need them on my timeline other than when I'm doing automation. When I zoom in, I want to zoom in on the waveform. If my track is empty, I don't really need it to be zoomed. So as you can see, with the track height locked, all the other tracks heights are being adjusted, but these tracks remain the same size. So now that we lock this track, we can't touch any of the controls, but I can still move it items around. I can cut them and trim them and put fades on them, all that stuff. Because locking track controls only applies to the track and not to the items. For items, you have a separate locking function. Go into item settings and then go into lock item. That's one way of doing it. I personally have item properties lock set to control and L. Item properties unlock set to control and U. In my opinion, you don't want to have a toggle hotkey for this. So if I have a bunch of tracks locked and I select a bunch of other tracks and I want to lock them, it won't affect the tracks that were already locked. So now that we have an item that is locked, I can't move it left and right, I can't move it up and down, I can't adjust its volume, I can't put any fades on it, or I can't adjust its fades. I always lock my video tracks because if you're making audio in sync to video, you want your video to stay in the same place. If I move the video slightly, then everything else that I've done in sync to picture will be out of sync. Or if you're mixing, you don't really need to move your items at the mixing stage if you're going through the stages in any sort of logical way, so you can lock your items. I can still split it, but if I split it, I still can't move it around, I still can't trim it, I can't adjust its timing. There is one annoying exception to this, and that's with regions, because regions seem to completely ignore that a track is locked. If you didn't know, if you move regions, the items under them will move with them with the default mouse modifier. So you would think that if an item is locked, it won't be affected by the regions moving. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So if I grab this verse region and I move it over here, the unlocked item and the locked item both moved, which is not the behavior we want. Now, of course, there are mouse modifiers. For me, it's control and left drag. If I control and left drag, I'd be able to move the region without its contents. But I wish there was a way to move a region without the locked contents, but with the unlocked contents. Because what I have to do right now is double click this region, and then I can hit B, which for me is split selected items at time selection. Once I did that, I can move this without its items, and then additionally move or copy this, which is fine for one item, harder to pull off with a lot of items. So there's no real way of hard locking items so they don't move with regions. However, there's a very simple fix for it as well. If I'm moving regions where I have a locked item that I don't want its position to move, I will actually unlock it and I will drag it back a little bit to a place where there's no regions. And what I can do is now I can lock this. So once I move my regions, do whatever it is that I want to do, maybe I'm working with a film and I'm copying some regions with some items on them or copying cues over or something like that. Once I got my regions to where I like them, I'm going to remove move all this stuff. I'm going to unlock this item and I'll just drag it back to its full length, which you can see with that little indentation right here. So that's a quick workaround. But yeah, be aware that locked items still move with regions. In stark contrast to that, if I, for example, ripple delete anything, that won't affect any of the locked items. Other than these, you have some project-wide locking settings and you can toggle project locking by pressing L by default, or it's an icon right here. And then if I hit shift and L, or if I right click on this, I will get my lock settings. So from this menu, I can select what things in my project I want to lock. For example, if I have a time selection and I'm rendering to that time selection, I may want to lock that time selection. So with time selection selected here and a time selection set, you can see that I can't really move this time selection around. I can create a new time selection. Now, if you press escape, you'll get this little menu that will tell you it's locked. So if you want to really remove it, you can just hit yes and that will remove it. There's item locking and items full. You can think of it as a time 
line lock. Anything in this area is no longer possible to touch and adjust in any way. I can't unlock these items. I can't move them. I can't do anything to them. You can also go really nitty gritty with items. So preventing left right movement, up down, so track to track movement, item edges, so you can no longer trim things, fades and volume handles, stretch markers. This one's really useful. Let's say I have an item with stretch markers. I'm not ready to glue the item and commit the stretch markers. But when I move stuff around, I don't want to accidentally move the stretch markers around either. Lock the stretch markers. You can lock envelopes on the item and you can also lock track envelopes. And now with track envelopes locked, I can no longer change automation on any of these lanes. You can't select any of the points. You can't do anything. You can also lock your regions and markers. They will get a little paler and you can no longer move them around at all. And finally, you can lock your time signature markers, which comes in handy in a project like this where I painstakingly tempo mapped a recording that was done without a click. Once I'm done and I'm happy with it, I definitely don't want any of that stuff to move. So I can come and lock my time signature markers. And Bob is your parent's sibling. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. And if you like the work I do, please donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link of that will be in the description. Thanks to all our previous donors. And I hope to see you back here soon. Bye.